Hello, this is licensed real estate broker George Amadova with Belalago Brokerage Inc. And today we're going to go over a couple of questions that people may have, especially realtors, regarding the changes that was implemented by MLS and it should have been implemented on the 17th. Nevertheless, it's already operating. Now, keep in mind, this is not legal advice. This is for educational purposes only. And we're going to go over a couple of stuff that happened. Now, I hear a lot of questions in regards to since we can no longer disclose a commission that is to be paid to the buyer if the seller is actually up, applying anything, how can I go about it, right? How can I reach out to the agent? Now, keep in mind that the law that passed or the regulation that passed doesn't necessarily say that the seller can't allocate X amount of funds out of the sale towards the buyer. It's just that he needs to be aware of what is being offered. And he needs to be aware that he's not entitled to offer anything if he doesn't have to. And obviously, I convey that to my clients. I sit down with the seller, for example, and I tell them what I, for the job that I do as a listing broker, how much I charge. Which usually, depending if I'm in a Bella Lago area and it's in my community, I'll do a little discount and I'll, I'll charge, let's say, 2.5%. Um, however, I tell them, although what you may offer, if any, to the buyer's agent is negotiable, you want to take into account other things and this you want to make use this for your client as well. For instance, a lot of builders are offering how much? According to the market right now, right? 3%. What else? They may be offering incentives. So you as a, as a seller, you have to take that into account because when a buyer's agent has a prospect buyer, although legally he's not supposed to steer his client anywhere else, he got to show whatever the properties the client would like to see or the customer, the fact of the matter is, is he's going to ask, okay, what is my responsibility? Why do I have to pay or, or how much am I going to need to come towards closing costs? And you as an educated agent need to be aware of that. Now, I tell the sellers again that if the prospect, if the market is giving 3% plus incentives, you are competing with these builders. Now, that buyer's agent, if they have a prospect buyer, most likely is going to grab that agent and go show them a property that where they're paying 3% commission versus yours if you're not paying anything or allocating any any commission, right? So it makes it that much harder and it's all depending on that client, on the seller. However, everything's negotiable and you want to negotiate that because he needs to understand how fast do you want to sell the property because the longer with this interest rate, the less you're giving out there, the quicker, or I should say the slower it's going to be to sell the property, right? So you want to take that into account. Now, as far as the agent, I remember many agents complain when I used to send out the MLS, uh, when I used to send out the price what I was offering on a property, right? Commission bonuses. Now, I guess one of the best ways you could communicate that is through constant contact, for example, right? Email blast. I do an email blast to my realtors in my area and I let them know, okay, uh, this property, I'm selling it for this much and uh, I'm giving so much bonus or the seller is willing to give X amount right towards the buyer's agent commission. Keep in mind that one of the arguments that I heard was that a lot of um, agents are asking the buyer's agent, let me see the buyer's agreement. And people say, oh, that's illegal. That's not illegal. Listen, the fact of the matter is if the seller wants in order to approve you to see the buyer's agreement, and I will recommend that to my clients, then he could ask that, right? He could ask for the pre-approval, right? He could ask for the approval of funds, okay? And he could ask for the buyer's agreement. And why is that? You should be uh, implementing that. And I'll tell you why. And by the way, we have given classes with real estate attorneys and we have another one coming up next week. And you can ask all those legal questions. But let me give you an example. If you're going to entertain a prospect buyer and you're going to get the listing agent to prep up the house and step out of the house, you want to make sure, representing the best interest of your client, that that buyer is what? Pre-approved, right? Not only is it he pre-approved, I want you to think about this. If your client is not offering anything towards the buyer's agent, that buyer's agent got to have an agreement. I would like to see that because if my client is not offering anything, how are you gonna convince your client to buy a house that he probably can't afford? He doesn't have enough funds. So why do I say that? For, ex for instance, let's say to make it simple, the house is worth $100,000, the asking price is $100,000, and he has closing costs. Now he has to allocate an additional or have an additional 3% or 2%, whatever you negotiate with your client, right, to be able to buy the property. Well, where are you gonna get those funds from? If the seller is not allocating those funds, how is he gonna buy the property? Therefore, he's not approved, right? We need to be aware of that because, again, we don't want to waste your time as well as 
the seller's time, which is we have to represent our client's best interest. So keep that in mind. Don't argue about what should you do or you shouldn't do. Just if you can, listen, you could remove or block pertinent details. However, we need to be aware of what's going on. At least we want to make sure that he has a sign, right, buyer's agreement. And I say that because, come on, guys, we all know we've seen um, agents that don't know what the hell they're doing. They probably bought their license in Miami, um, and they don't know how to do the contracts. They ask new questions and they screw things up. Well, you also have those agents that are shopping around, going with the prospect who came on vacation, has no pre-approval, no proof of funds, and they're wasting other people's time and they're just going around looking around what we call window shopping, right? You don't want to be there. Okay, you want to make sure you have a qualified buyer and that he's serious. So one of the things that you can't ask for is to make sure that he has that buyer's agreement that protects you as the buyer's agent. You just got to know how to sell your own value. If you have no value, then yes, it's going to be hard for you to convince your prospect buyer to allocate those funds. You got to let them know as well. Sit down with them and say, okay, look, I charge whatever you decide to charge, right? Commission, whether it's 2.5, 2%, 3%, 5%. That's up to you. But the prospect needs to be aware that not every seller out there will be allocated towards the, um, the prospect you know, buying or the commission. Therefore, who's going to pay you? So you could say, listen, if he doesn't pay me, this is how much you're going to owe me, 2.5%, 3%, whatever you negotiate, or the difference, right? And you figure that out. Because remember, if you actually sign a buyer's agreement with your client and say at 2.5% and the uh, listing is offering 3%, you just cut yourself out at, of half percent. So keep that in mind, okay? We will have a, a class coming up again with our licensed real estate attorney, Lou Oliver. We're Oliver Title Law, so be aware because we are going to be inviting you.